here we go, here we go. If you think you've seen me before, if you think I look familiar to you, like I look like somebody, you've probably seen me before. Most people know me as the girl in Gran Torino, the Moan girl in Batman vs Superman. That is me, I'm your girl. Today is an introduction about my channel, a life update, and then Q&A because I know that a lot of you guys have questions for me. So I just thought, why don't I just answer these questions right here? Let's get this. This channel is basically just gonna be about basically my life. I'm recording with my phone and I honestly don't know where to look at. Oh, I think I'm supposed to look right there. Y'all, I'm feeling myself because my makeup is looking real. My skin and my makeup is looking real. Who did this? Okay. Life update. My life most likely does not matter to you. And that is okay. But for those of you who are curious, here is a life update for you. I co-starred in the movie Gran Torino with the wonderful Clint Eastwood back when I was um, 16. You know, that was like my debut as an actress. I was also seen in, you know, a couple independent films and then, um, the the other popular one that people noticed me in was Batman versus Superman. And so what what happened? What happened after, you know, being in a movie? Like where where am I now? After that, basically, I wanted to focus on academics. I've always been an academic driven person, and most people who know me when I was younger, like they know that like I was known as that the A plus Asian girl. So I finished high school as valedictorian, woo woo. And I had a really lame valedictorian speech, actually. We're not gonna talk about this. And then I went to college. I fell in love with the man of my dreams in college and we got engaged and then we got married. I think I was a 19 or 20. I don't remember the actual age, but we got married. I moved, I finished college. I worked as a software developer for a couple years and then I got pregnant with my first little baby boy. And then I realized that it's really hard for me to spend time all day at work when I know I have a sweet little baby at home. So I decided to become a stay at home mom. Three kids later, three boys later, I'm actually, actually, Three boys and then one girl on the way. I'm pregnant, y'all. I'm pregnant with my first baby girl. Which, off topic, okay? But I've been really debating about, my makeup is smearing. I've been really debating if I want to have a fifth child and try for a sister for my baby girl. If you are an only daughter or you only have one daughter, write in the comments below what growing up was like for you or for your daughter. Like, were you lonely? Did you want a sister? If I'm gonna have another kid, I'm gonna have another kid right after this one. Like, I'm trying to pop out all my kids as soon as possible. So comment below, let me know, let me know. Seriously, I really want to know. I really want to know, you might help me. So I became a stay at home mom and I've just been staying home since. Oh, I forgot, I almost forgot to mention, I decided to do photography too. So my sister and I, we actually do photography together. We just started our business like just a little over two years ago. So we're like super young. If you wanna check out our work, go ahead. We're new, but I think we're pretty, we're pretty, we're pretty good. Like we're getting there at least. And it's a lot of fun. It's something for us to do while, you know, while she's in college. And while I am a stay-at-home mom, like I need to do something with myself. So now I'm a stay-at-home mom, a wedding photographer, and now I'm making YouTube videos. I don't even know if I have time. With three boys and one baby girl on the way, I just don't know how I'm gonna find time to make videos and more content. Okay, let's get to the Q&A. These are the most common questions that I get and that ha I have gotten over like a span of 10 years. What is something you wish you can do more of? Dance. I love dancing. I tried to be a B girl one time. It didn't get very far. Ladies. 
if you're pregnant, don't do this. And gentlemen, if you're pregnant, you need some help. Well, since I'm down here, let me show you how to do the moonwalk on your knees. Oh, my knees. How did you get into a Hollywood movie? At the time when they were casting for Gran Torino, they were looking specifically for Hmong people. And me being Hmong, I mean, it just pushed my chances up, right? The first time I heard about casting for Gran Torino was um, through Craigslist. So they had auditions everywhere and I couldn't make a lot of the auditions because it was kind of like they would post about it and then the audition was like two days later and they were in locations that I just obviously couldn't get to because I was a high schooler who couldn't drive. I had missed so many chances like in Minnesota, Canada, but I'm telling y'all this, this was a divine. Hmong people, they have these soccer tournaments like all over the US and um, this one was happening in Detroit and I'm from Michigan. So I went to the tournament. They had a booth to sign up for this movie that they were casting for. So I went with my guy friends and my guy friends signed up and I didn't sign up because uh, I was kind of embarrassed. So I was about to walk away. And then the casting lady, um, she was like, you should sign up. And she said, well, just do it. You never know what can happen. So I signed up and then they called me um, the day or two after that, a day or two after that. And then they just said, hey, we want you to come in for audition. So I went to the first audition. Then they called me back, went to the second audition. And then um, a third round, I think, I actually don't remember if it was only two or three rounds, but I think there were three rounds of auditions. Two months later, I finally heard back from them and basically they just told me that I got the role. I mean, there were more details I can tell you about, but I don't think y'all wanna sit here forever listening to me ramble on about it. But if you do, just email me or something. Are you going to act anymore? I honestly would love to. Every now and then I get yearnings, like I get a deep desire and yearning to do it. But for right now, like I mentioned, I have goals for my family and I'm trying to pop out all my kids before I hit 30, then okay, we'll see. We will see. Have you ever dated outside of your race? I haven't, only because during the time that I did like someone that was outside of my race, I was too afraid to think about dating or <laughs> talking to boys. Back in middle school, I had a crush on one of my black guy friends and well, we didn't get anywhere. Okay, disclaimer, I am happily married and I'm just answering a question, okay? So honey boo, if you are watching this video, I love you and only you. And I do not think about other men, but you. How do I start acting? I'll try to cut to the point. I'd say one, get some training. Try to get lessons and enhance your skill from people who know what they're doing. That way they can really teach you. Get experience. When you're starting out, whether it's a high school play, whether it's um, you know just doing a couple gigs for friends, like student um, filmmakers for free, whether it's joining your local theater club, experience is good. I didn't have experience when I first started. For one, I did not do a great job. I cringe every time I see myself on the big screen but I wish I had experience. I wish I knew what I was doing. I wish I knew how to read a script and to think about it and to step into the character um, of that script. You know, I, I wish I knew how to think. Find an agent or a manager. A manager is going to help you um, basically manage your career. They're gonna help you with your image, where you should go, steps you should take, training that you need to do, you know, they, they help manage your career. Get an agent, they have the connection to jobs, they bring it in, they're the ones who send you out to auditions, and, and so that's really helpful too, okay? So both managers and agents, they do um, different things, but then starting with one at least, will help you decide what steps you should take next, okay? You can't really guarantee for sure that you are going to make it because you never really know what a casting director is looking for, you know, when they're thinking of a role. You might be super talented, but you might not have the look that they're going for. Maybe to them, like you 
couldn't bring the character to life. And so you're not that character for that casting director. If you go to auditions and you keep failing and failing, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're bad. You never know, okay? Just keep practicing and um, building your skill. Let me tell you, once you land your dream role, the work doesn't stop. Don't think that, okay, I got this role, I did a movie, now everything's just gonna come pouring into me, I just gotta sit back, relax, boom, I made it. That's not how it works. You have to continually work, network with people, do more jobs, get experience. The work is continual. Right now, I'm not currently involved in the industry enough to actually have any legitimate advice anyway. Why are you listening to me? Maybe you shouldn't listen to me. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I've been recording for a long time, so it's, um, it's time for me to get, get out of here and go take care of my kids, but thank you. Hope you enjoyed, and if you are somewhat entertained, subscribe, and the next time I have time, um, maybe I'll try to um, put up another video or something, you know what I'm saying? We'll come up with something, okay? All right, thank you.